here this morning. Appreciate you uh, sharing with us. Uh, rejoice and praise for that good story. Um, she interviewed me for about 30 minutes, and if I could have picked four quotes, those were it. So it's very rare that you get uh, that quality of journalism from someone who's just learning about something. It's hard to, it's hard to grasp. It was hard for us to grasp, wasn't it? <laughs> so, so she had 30 minutes and she got it. So that's, that's a good thing. That's a, we're, we're thanking God for that. I wanted to do a, kind of a summary this morning of our series on balance. I want to go to Proverbs chapter 3 the, uh, for that. I'll be sharing with you one of the graphics that we use at Moving Forward. It was on the screen. She took a picture of it. Um, when we say balance, we're talking about all the parts of us. And as I thought about how, how could I capsule this in a single place, I had decided in my devotions in the morning to, to go through Proverbs. And there it was. But that's how you capsule it. Solomon did a great job. We'll just use uh, Proverbs 3. So the first two verses before what I showed the kids this morning say, My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. I emphasize their life and peace. So my question this morning is how? How do we find that balance? Body, heart, mind, and soul. This is uh, the way God created us, and we're going to see uh, Solomon address that in several verses at the end of the lesson this morning. The two verses that I read with the kids, do not let kindness, loving kindness, that's why I use the word love, do not let loving kindness and truth or loyalty leave you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart so you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and men. And then verses you're probably familiar with. I'm going to do, use this sort of the way I did last week with the positive and the negative. So it begins as we read across, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not Lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him or submit to him. And he will make your paths straight. But don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. You don't fear the Lord you can expect to physically feel that. Now, one of the things I, I often say to us, and, and this, is not, uh, this is not the only reason we don't feel good, okay? But it is a sign worth looking at. If you're not feeling well, you take a look inside and you say, is there something that's different? Am I, am I thinking something in a, in a wrong way? Is my heart full of something that shouldn't be in it? Am I not treating my body as if it were God's uh, temple for his spirit? Is, is there some reason that I'm hiding sin and do I need to address sin in my life? All those things, that's part of the balance, right? And, and the psalmist and the, the wise man both tell us uh, our bodies are linked to our sense of well-being. And that's, that's, of course, what we've been saying for weeks here. So let me sum up those verses in these, these slides. In that balance of uh, soul, mind, heart, and body, he says to remember, what part of you remembers? Your mind. And keep the commands, but he says the keeping is in my heart. But where else do I keep the commands? Well, in my life, in all of me. And the reward for that will be long life and peace. And then he talks about three things that we need to, to be involved in. One, he talks about trusting in the Lord and doing what the Lord says and fearing the Lord. 
Those are responses that we have to the Lord. But notice that they involve the mind, the heart, and the body. And when you've involved the mind and the heart and the body toward the Lord, what, have you, what else have you involved? Your soul. So the complete package is involved in trust, obey, and fear. But he says that the result of that will be health and refreshment for the body. We actually will feel better when we do things and have a good conscience that are obedient to God. Now the verse that I read for the kids this morning begins to expand on this sense of, of well-being. He talks about the favor and the reputation that we have. And there are a lot of people that say, well, our whole being involves a social aspect. And, and we need to be aware of that. Well, th that's what the, the wise man said. Love and faithfulness or love and loyalty are things that, that are behaviors that involve the heart. If our heart is in it and we act as in, the, in the good ways that we uh, are called to act because we love and keep his commandments, then people like that. And God especially is in favor of that. He likes that. So we begin to add that dimension that's, that's kind of outside ourselves. It begins to involve other people. And then he involves something else that's outside of ourselves in verses 9 and 10. He says, Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of all your produce. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. God told the Israelites when they went into the land, uh, what, what comes up the first year, that's mine. I gave you the land. Now, now think about that. <laughs> so what did they eat? Well, how much, do you, how much do you truly believe this is the land that God has given you? Will you give me that honor, God says? Will you give me that honor and give me the first fruits? And then from then on, the offerings were, of course, the first fruits of the harvest. But if we start with that, and with what we are blessed with, we think of God first, and then we think of the needs that we have, that of course those things have brought about, then it's a financial, something outside us, but something we think of as part of our well-being, our financial well-being. Honoring the Lord with wealth and with what is produced, that's by our hands or of course from the ground, that brings about this sense of well-being throughout and involves the social as well as the financial. Now, if you're like me, when you realize, you know, we're talking about the commandments of God, right? There are times that there's a need for correction. There are times, as I say, when I look inside myself and I say, something doesn't feel right, what is it? That something may be inside me. It may be something in someone around me and I'm letting that influence my life. The wise man in verse 11 through 13 says there's something called discipline. Do not reject the discipline of the Lord or loathe his reproof. The Lord loves whom he reproves even as a father corrects the son in whom he delights. How blessed is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. Discipline? Is that part of my well-being? Well, it is if I'm, if I'm really focused on keeping what the Lord says, and I really want to do what He says, and I'm surrounded by people who are also trying to do what the Lord says, won't I listen if someone says, wait a minute, that didn't look right? And won't that be, at first, a reproof Something that didn't feel as good as the love and encouragement that I normally get. But if I need it, I want that to occur. I want that to occur. And he reminds us that God is in the habit of correcting us. And he does it because he loves us. And then he mentions this wisdom and understanding at the bottom. And then begins to expand on that. The song that we sang this morning... Uh, personalizes this to be referring to the Lord himself, but uh, in the proverb, it's really talking about wisdom. Her ways are pleasant ways. I'm sorry, her profit is better than silver. Her gain better than fine gold. She is more precious than jewels. Nothing you desire compares with her. Long life is in her right hand, in her left hand are riches and honor. 
So see how he's bringing all that together? Uh, we're, we're back to the long life again, but he says the rich as an honor are also involved. And that's the repute that was talked about. It's just, Solomon is just, just bathing this whole thing and saying, yeah, this is all connected. This is all related. You've got to, you've got to see how these come together. Her ways are pleasant, he goes on to say. Her paths are peace. She is a tree of life. You want to go to the Garden of Eden? It's right here. Wisdom from God is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. And happy are all who hold her fast. Wisdom comes from spending a lot of time with God, from spending a lot of time in the things that he says. And I, I can tell you, I've been, I'm about two-thirds of the way through Proverbs right now. Number one, it's very hard to stay with. I'm listening, so that's okay. It would be helpful if I were reading and listening. You have to tune in. You have to really pay attention because Solomon is on to the next subject in about ten words. <laughs> and you've got to stay with it. And I've also noticed that from chapter three, I, th there's some memory verses there. You know, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Do you know how you learn that? You, you put it on your refrigerator. You put it on your bathroom mirror. You put it in your pocket on a piece of paper so that it's there. And you rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. And that's how God's wisdom goes into our heart. And when God's wisdom gets into our heart, it comes out in our life. And again, it's the whole person and it's the balance of that whole person. So let me, let me try this with you. What wisdom does, according to these verses we've just read, is it brings character it changes our life in a, in a complete way. I can't just say in one way. It just doesn't just make me smarter. It doesn't just make me more compassionate. Not just in one way. It's, it's, it's throughout my entire being. And, and I'm going to call that character. Because that's what people see and that's what people say. That's, that's good character. I can recognize good character. And then he uses these words. It's pleasant. It's happy. It involves life. Do you want a life that's pleasant? Do you want a life that's happy? The wisdom of God is the only way you're going to see that. And again, if you continue to listen to Proverbs, he'll tell you 50 ways you don't want to do this, and it will not lead to these things. And it's pretty graphic. Now this last section that I, I want to look at, I, it, it's several verses, but I just want to read them at once and, and make an observation why he's bringing this particular thing up. He's going to talk about the foundation of the earth. Now when did we see the foundation of the earth laid? That would be creation. So think creation. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding he established the heavens. By his knowledge the deep were broken up. The skies drip with dew. My son... Let them not vanish from your sight. Keep sound wisdom and discretion, so they will be life to your soul and adornment to your neck. Then you will walk in your way securely. Your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden fear, nor the onslaught of the wicked when it comes, for the Lord will be your confidence. He will keep your foot from being caught. God has created a world where, where all of this works. He's created us so that when we do these things, we feel better all over. And things go better in our lives. And in, if we're in a balance, then that balance is humming like a good motor running. So I, I've, just, I've made this list of the things that we've looked at this morning. And repeatedly, he said, long life is involved. In Proverbs, do you know why your life gets shortened? Because you do stupid things. You go up against somebody you shouldn't have gone up against. You don't pay attention to something that God created, like gravity. You think you're stronger than you really are. And your life gets shortened. That's really sad. When someone with promise and someone with ability and someone with potential dies in their teens or their 20s. Why? Life is before them. Because they do stupid things. 
I'm, I'm going to tell you because I think she would not mind. That grandmother of 26, we had a long talk. One reason that she's caring and dealing with so many grandchildren is because her children are on drugs. This baby is in ICU because mom took drugs. Now, you're going to half kill your baby to do that. The baby may die because of that. The baby may, may struggle for a lot of years with a, with a habit they didn't even do. Who did that? Someone who's not paying attention to the wisdom of God. Someone who's let the pain of life turn to medication. And I always say, legal or illegal drugs. We're no better with some of our prescriptions. And you do understand that some of the things that are making people die today are prescribed in the doctor's office. Long life comes when God is our strength and God is our refuge and God is the one who teaches us how to live. And then we don't need to be medicated on something else to make the pain go away. God will take the pain away. There'll be happiness. Financial security is possible. Why? Because I know where my wealth comes from. It comes from God. And I bless Him for that. I use it for His benefit. I share it with others. And He takes care of me. The favor of others is part of that equation because who wouldn't want to be around someone who's healthy, wealthy, and wise? Because of God. That favor of others is a reality. My health is better. Doesn't mean we won't die. Doesn't mean we won't get sick. Paul, who could heal by saying so, wrote at the end of one of his letters, Trophimus, I left sick in Ephesus. What would you leave him sick for? Why don't you just heal him? Because that's not why he healed people. And sickness is a part of life. And dying is a part of life. And at some point, God blesses us with health, and then we don't have it. Because we're not made for this world. And we're not made for forever in this body. As we talked last week, we're made for forever with the body He will give us. That's what gives us security. Lay my head down on my pillow and not worry about being unsafe. I am at peace. My sleep is sweet, as He says. These are all things that happen from a balanced life that recognizes God at the center. Balance is wisdom and character that come from creation... He's, he's put it in the foundations of the world. And the commands that give us specifics on how to do things. There's so many things about this world that I wish I understood. And God has not explained them. I, I, don't, I don't understand static electricity. I know it hurts. I love when my wife wants to kiss my nose, but ooh, Wow. I don't know if my nose hurts worse than her lips or not. Static electricity. Wow. Zing. Where'd that come from? What's that for? He's got purposes for all this stuff. It's all bound into creation. And, and what it ought to make us do is say, now if someone would go to the trouble of creating that, I wonder if I could figure that out. And then we realize that what he created is very predictable. And then he actually tells us things. Like if you want to live a long time, then do what I say and don't be stupid. Don't let your anger get out of control. Don't just consume any and everything in your path. You've you got to do things the way God says to do them. All these things come from the Lord. The balance in our lives represent wisdom and character that comes from creation and from the commands of the Lord. And that's why we've got to be drinking this up. This word of his is not helping anybody on the shelf. It's not. It's available. That's helpful. <laughs> but it's only potential on the shelf. Until it gets into the heart, it's inert. It's potential. It isn't reality. So, the wise man has said, I need to know and trust and obey the commandments of the Lord. 
And that needs to come because I fear God. And that fear of God is that reverence that says, hey, he made something pretty special, pretty mysterious in a lot of ways, and yet he tells me these very specific things, and they work. And it's good for me. I want to know this God. I want to revere this God. I want to respect this God. And we sum that up with the word fear. It involves God's discipline, as we mentioned. God's discipline and correction, he says it, the Hebrew writer repeats it, it comes from his love. God is not trying to catch us in something so he can exclude us. He's not trying to catch us so he can say, well, see, I knew it. He's trying to catch us because that's going to hurt, and if he can stop it, it won't hurt as long, and he can forgive it, and then it won't hurt at all. God disciplines and corrects from his love. And a lot of his correction comes from his word because I seek it out. You can't just go through life thinking, well, somebody will tell me if I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> or they won't. I mean, it's your life. So get in here and find what makes it work right. God's discipline and correction also, as I just mentioned, comes from creation itself. For instance, gravity. He's made so many things. You know, it, there's not a sign on everything that's dangerous. It's, it, it's, we turn this into ridiculous. You can't drink a cup of coffee anymore without a, a warning on the label. It's hot. I know I ordered it that way. I told them to make it hot. Well, you know, there's liabilities. No, there's stupidity. When you grab a cup and it's so warm in your hand, you've got to put a collar around it, then you don't shove it down your mouth. With, it could burn you. I mean, you know, life has some built-in safeguards. And God is trying to talk to us. He's trying to say, I created it. Pay attention to what I did. Pay attention to how it is. And by the way, listen to these commands. I, I can stop a lot of this pain that you're trying to medicate with these drugs, a lot of this tension, a lot of these physical ailments that the doctor doesn't know where that came from. And as I got to studying trauma this year, I figured out <laughs> a lot of the things that you go to a psychologist and you're medicated for have to do with this balance that's out of balance. And it does stem from hard things that have happened in our lives. And all the pills in the world to dull the pain are only going to make us dependent on pills that dull pain. And that's called drug addiction. Fix the life. And the body won't hurt. Fix the life and the heart won't hurt. Fix the life and the head won't hurt. So many of these things are rooted in this imbalance that we carry around because we're not paying attention to what God says. It's for our protection. He says you can lay your head down on your pillow and you don't have to worry about something bad happen. And when the evil day comes, and it will, he's there to protect you too. And therefore we can lay down with peace. That's all because of God's discipline and correction. At the end of uh, Proverbs 3, I think this really sums up the entire chapter. This is verses 33 through 35. I did not read many, many, many verses. I encourage you to do that. But he says the curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked. Think of it this way. If I don't do what God wants done, and he's built into the creation these checks and balances that, you know, kind of slap me around a little bit and say, ooh, that hurts. Then where does that feedback, that discipline, that hard knock, that consequence come from, but from the Lord. It's His design. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked. They're not doing things according to plan. He blesses the dwelling of the righteous and the house of the righteous is what He's saying there. He blesses the house of the righteous. He scoffs at the scoffers, those that say... <laughs> God doesn't know anything. God says, <laughs> you'll find out. 
Yeah. Okay. You don't want to do it with my help? That's going to hurt. But you don't want my help. So, okay. So he says, go ahead. He scoffs at the scoffers. But he gives grace to the afflicted, and that's the word humble. James quotes that. He gives grace to the humble. Jesus talked about that. The wise will inherit honor, but fools are a display of dishonor. Solomon is no nonsense, is he not? And uh, like I say, there's some, there's some principles and some proverbs in here that, that are quite graphic. But they're true. They are the wisdom of the Lord. In the life of one who was the wisest on earth. But the wisest on earth, what happened to him? He sinned. He didn't live some of his own proverbs. He married multiple wives. He had so many wives that he couldn't have any peace. How many wives would it take for that to happen? Well, he had wives and concubines up to the number 1,000. So, you know, kind of, kind of reaped his own whirlwind there, didn't he? That's what the power in his day did. And he succumbed to that power. So all the wisdom in the world, again, is on the shelf, doesn't do any good, even if you've written it, even if you've recited it, even if you've memorized it, it won't do any good unless you're living it. And that is a current, everyday meditation and practice. And so this series has been about how to get our lives in balance, how to make all of those things that God created work well within us so that we're of value to those around us. And we're pleasing to the one who made us. If there's some sense in which your life is out of balance, I want to encourage you to seek out what needs to be different. If we can help you with that, if there's someone sitting on the row with you that would be more than happy to help you with that, please seek it out. If you're not in Christ, I can tell you you're carrying around sin and failure and things that... God never intended for you to have to carry by yourself. He wants to lift it up and take it away. And he does that as we ask him to come into our lives, to rule our lives, and to forgive us. If you need these things, I invite you to come to the front now while we stand and sing.